Last night, a utility pole right down the street from my house was smoldering and actually caught fire, and uh, we lost all power to our subdivision. Fortunately, I do have a, uh, a power backup, one of those uninterrupted power supplies, right? The UPSs, and I do have one of those that works really well, but um, one thing that came of that power outage was that this, this Sun Sun, after running steady and solid for seven years, uh, developed a leak. Now, um, so I'm pulling it out for the first time since that. Now, you can see some water pouring pouring out of it. It looks, it looks like I may have had an O-ring failure, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop it open and, and, and make, make sure. But that looks for sure like an, like an, like the O-ring has, has lost its, its seal. Now, the reason I even knew this happened, because usually when there's a power outage, I let things kind of sit, you know, just kind of sit and, uh, and until the power comes back on. But I have this, um, this unit. I'm not sure if I can pull it all the way through with this cord, but I have this, uh, this unit here. It's called a watch dog alarm. And what happened is this tub, which I, I always suggest you keep your canister filters in the tub, uh, started to get a little bit of water in it. Here you can hear what happened. So that alerted me that something was not right. <laughs> so that little watchdog, I paid, I don't know, 15 bucks for it, paid for itself. So uh, let's go ahead and get this guy out of here. And it is a little bit of a pain to do it, but it's got to get done. I can see some water leaking, leaking out of it. Yep, I suspect we've got an O-ring failure, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see to be sure. And there's uh, quite a bit, quite a bit of water in the tub, about an inch, inch or two. If you can make that out. All that is water that would have been at the bottom, at the bottom of my, uh, can you see that? How much water's in there? Anyway, that's that's water that would have been at the bottom of my uh, of my stand. So fortunately, it was captured by this Rubbermaid. Now, what I'm going to do, I think, I'm going to dump this water out, and then I'm going to work on this inside the Rubbermaid. That way, I'm not going to get water everywhere, and my cabinet is, is bone dry. Thank goodness for this uh, watchdog, this watchdog alarm. So let me dump this water out. We'll put this inside the Rubbermaid and we'll work on it that way. This uh, canister also, like that Fluval FX6, has been running for about a year. And so you'll be able to see the media as well. Yeah, see this should have a suction so that when I pull it out you hear a like a, like a suction sound, and I'm not hearing that, so obviously that was broken somewhere. The motor section of this always holds a lot of water, so you always gotta make sure you pour all that out before you do anything. And if you have a UV light, be careful with these things, because they, they will break if you hit them against anything, and then you've gotta go hunting on the internet to find one. So just watch for that. Yeah, just like the uh, Fluval, the media isn't that bad. The, the pre-filter over the intake is doing a pretty good job. You see that? You make that out. That's not too bad. These are the, some, of those, uh, some of those balls, polishing balls from my friends over at Sarah. So, not in bad shape. I got some pumice under that basically matrix. <laughs> Since I've got it open, I might as well do a maintenance on it. And hopefully when I put it back together, it'll run without leaking. The water inside of the, uh, 
of the canister is, is pretty murked up. Even though the, the media itself doesn't look that bad. But I have some pretty dark water. That's some pretty good, pretty good plant water. You know, just give it to your plants. They'll love it. Another thing I'll do is I'll service the impeller, which is this in this in this area here. You just pop it open. You can see the big it has a pretty good heavy duty magnet. Not as heavy duty as the uh, as what you get on a fluval, but still, it's pretty good. The housing isn't that dirty, but the magnet's got a little gunk on it, so I'll clean that up. And my sus my number one suspect in the leaking issue is the O-ring. So the body of the unit doesn't seem to be leaking, at least not from below this area here. So I'm, I'm pretty certain that my problem is is uh, how the how the main motor the motor unit is is sealing or not sealing. So let's take a look at this O-ring. Now be real gentle with these O-rings. Don't don't you don't want to uh, cut or stretch them. So just take them out gently. You can see here. Let's inspect this thing. Whenever you clean them, don't pull on them because you'll add length to them and then they, they will not fit right. But uh, I'm not really seeing any real damage or flat spots, which is going to leave me in a bit of a mystery. I mean, I can re-lubricate it and see what happens. It looks in real good shape. I'd replaced it a couple years ago and I keep them lubed up so they, they, they actually wear really well. I'm gonna lube this one back and put it on and see what happens and uh, see if that, if that handles the issue. Clean off some of the gunk. You know, when you, when you service something like a like a canister or really any kind of filter, don't, don't, don't get over don't get worked up too much on little bits, little little bits of gunk. Uh, just don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. You don't have to have it in, in pristine, brand new condition. It'll run fine. So I'm gonna lube this up and put it on and then rinse out the media and and fire it up again and keep a very close eye and have the have the watchdog in there and see if 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 maybe getting this thing lubed up can, can get it sealed up and also by firing it up, uh, you know, get the, uh, get it going again. So uh, let me go ahead and do that. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I use a uh, food grade silicone lubricant. This is called Husky HVS 100. And uh, it's safe, fish safe, people safe. And uh, don't need much, you know, just a little bit. A little dab will do you. And we'll see if that actually gets this thing working and sealing the way it's supposed to. I mean, the O-ring looks good. I'm just hoping it's not a cracked, a cracked canister, in which case it would just need to be replaced. I'd probably pick up a either another, pick up another 704B or maybe uh, maybe another Fluval, you know, canisters I'm familiar with, or maybe try one of those new Oase canisters. I've heard good things about them. And uh, not too crazy about the heater that's built into them because of course if that heater malfunctions, there's no, uh, I don't think there's a controller, a way to put a controller on it. So I'd, I'd probably have to find one without a built-in heater. So let's, yeah, it's, it's still tight, it's not stretched. So I'm thinking it's probably gonna be okay, but we'll, fingers crossed, if it doesn't work, I may have to go to a plan B, which is to go ahead and get another canister. But uh, the good news is I do have a, you know, a, a, like a 1900 gallon per hour 
a pump on the sump, so I am still moving a lot of water and you know a lot of surface breakup and uh, a lot of turnover. So I'm not not concerned. And this is again a case, uh, you know, a case for redundancy. You know, you want you want to run you want to run multiple uh, you want to run mul multiple filters, and that way, in the event something like this happens, you're you're okay. So. Yeah, these sponges are a little dirty, you know, but I'm not just not seeing a, a tremendous amount of buildup. And again, I think it's because of those uh, pre-filters. So, but you can see, I'll show you the water and, and you, you'll see that it's, uh, it's due, it's due for a clean out. If you just go by the condition of the water, can you see that? I wouldn't drink that. So let's get that poured out into a bucket that can then be poured over some plants. Yeah, I've got some uh, some plants in the garden that are going to love that. Okay, so let's put this canister back together again, and. Uh, Everything's been rinsed out. The water, uh, the way the water circulates in the sun sun is it goes to the bottom and, and is pulled back up by the, by the pump, is pulled through the media. So you want to have your coarse, your, your coarse sponges, you want to have your coarse sponges at, at the bottom. You have to make sure you line up, you line this, this hole up, you have to make sure that gets lined up correctly or else you'll have a problem. So it should sit in there pretty snugly. Then your, your medium, medium sponges. And this is just a whole bunch of sponges that have been cut and cobbled together uh, that I had laying around. So this is a, a medium, a medium sponge. Be sure the baskets are seated nice and snug and tight. And then a, uh, a finer sponge, not super fine, but pretty fine. You should hear it snap into place so that it's, it's seated correctly. If not, you're going to have a rattling canister. I was kind of surprised at how, uh, how nice the, uh, these little polishing balls look after they were rinsed. These are from Sarah. A little cover that goes on top and again everything should snap snap down nice so there's no movement when you put your uh, when you put this back in you have to really make sure that it is perfectly in place okay it, it has a, a place at the bottom that this little rubber piece here, that little rubber piece that you see in the end, it slips into a small hole on the bottom. So you've got to make sure that's in there. And then you've got to make sure that this top rubber piece is in the hole at the top of the cap. So, and then the cap should snap down into place. And you'll know, you'll know when it's and you've got it. That's good. If this is loose at all, you're going to end up with, again with a rattling canister and then you're going to say that sun suns are no good because they're noisy. So before I put the top on, let's go ahead and put some water in it. You want the water level a few inches from the top. You don't want it too close to the top because then it'll just spill out everywhere when you close it up. Let's get some water in there. Everything I'm doing here is with tap water. I don't worry about the uh, beneficial bacteria impact because I have such a deep substrate. That should be enough water. Maybe just a little teeny bit more. 
enough water to get it going. Like I said, you don't want the water level too high because this, when this pushes, when this pushes in, it'll displace the water and just have it pouring it, pouring out the sides. If it's set up right, these side snaps should pretty much snap down on their own. Everything's positioned right. See what I'm saying? And then these are these secure it a little extra. Let me get that water out of there. Now I'm going to really dry it off because I want to see if any water is coming out of it once uh, once it starts running. So between my visual inspection and the uh, watchdog alarm, I will know right away if there's a problem. And again, because I have it inside of this container, I'm going to be able to spot the issue right away and not have any damage to the wood cabinet. I do keep it on a pad and that way it helps to dampen vibration. I'm going to get some water spilling when I tilt it. That's normal. All right, we'll put this back on the bottom. When water, when water uh, creates a closed circuit between these two sensors, the alarm will sound. So I'll put this down there. to alert me if it's still leaking. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, it fired right up. No, uh, no problem with priming it. I do like to give it a little bit of a jiggle just to get any air, any air out of it. I call it burp, burping the canister. Now the good news is I don't see any any water dripping anywhere. I don't feel any water, I don't see any water. So maybe for some reason when the power went out the O-ring stopped sealing but with that additional lubricant on there maybe that'll take care of it. So I guess a real test would be to unplug it and see what it does. Let's unplug it and let's recreate a power outage. Okay, no drips. So it looks like it might have been the, uh, it might have been the a problem with the O-ring. It's one little drip here, but that's that's not a leak. That's just residual from the snap. A little bit of leftover, but now it's dry. All right, I'm going to plug it back in, let it run, and just count on the watchdog to to tell me if anything if anything goes on, and if something does go on. Hopefully, between now and the time I leave for Aquashella in a couple days. <laughs> Uh, I'll just have to replace it. So there you go. If you have any questions about canister filters, uh, or any filtration for that matter, uh, go ahead and comment below. If you like the content of the channel, be sure to give this uh, video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you don't miss anything. And uh, I think we're good to go with this, fingers crossed. I'll keep a close eye on it. It's a passing, uh, passing inspection as of right now. And I'll keep you updated and I'll let you know. Otherwise, I'm just gonna let it run, leave it alone. Uh, the best thing you can do with canister filters, just leave them alone, let them run. And uh, I'll resurface this one in, another, in a year from now. Uh, with the pre-filter, uh, it really keeps the inside in good shape. So um, it can run for as long as a year. All right, so that's it for me. I hope to see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. Great group of fish keepers get together and talk about everything related to fish keeping. And 
I will uh, I'll be seeing you uh, from Daytona, Florida. I'll be in at the Aquashella and I'll be uh, posting some material, some videos from there with my friend Jerry Martin. Uh, check out Jerry's Fish Room. And that's it, I guess. Uh, if you want to support the channel, become a Patreon. Uh, information on how to do that is uh, below the video in the description. And also I'll put, a, I'll put a comment up here or a link to the Patreon information video. Thank you, my friends. Take care. And if you're interested in canisters and uh, in general, check out this playlist and filtration in general, this playlist down here. And for my best tips, check this this one out and to subscribe hit right here all right thank you so much bye bye